Hi, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com and welcome back to another JavaFX tutorial. In this video, we are going to learn about properties in JavaFX. I'm going to cover the following topics. What are JavaFX properties? We'll talk a little bit about Java beans, also known as POJOs or plain old Java objects. We'll look at the different property types that are available to us in JavaFX. We're going to learn about how to create a property in JavaFX. And finally, how to attach a listener to a property. So there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. So what is a property? Simply put, a property is a value that represents the state of an object and that value can be retrieved and or set within the object itself. And what the accessor pattern means is that classes that implement this pattern have getter and setter methods to access the value of instance variables. That's probably more easier understood if we look at an example. So let's create a new class. I've created a new project called Properties Demo, and within that I've also created a single class called main.java, and the main class has a main method as the starting point of our program. So let's create a new class, and I'm going to call this class person, and to make it easier to conceptualize what I'm going to show you about properties, I'm going to scale this down to the point where we only have a single instance variable in the class. So let's create a private instance variable of type string, and I'll call that instance variable first name. I'll give the class a no argument constructor And since this variable is private, there's no way to directly access the value from outside of the class. So if we want people to have access to the value of this variable, we have to provide a method within the class in order to allow people to get and or set that value. So let's create two methods. And these are both going to be public. And the accepted way of doing this is for the getter, the method that provides the value, we will use the word get and we will capitalize the first letter of our instance variable, so first name. And this method will return a value of type string, which is the same as the type for the instance variable first name. So we return this dot first name. That's our getter. For the setter, it's very similar. Public void in this case, because we're not returning a value. We'll use set and again capitalize the first letter of the variable that we're going to set, first name. And we will provide as an argument to this method a string variable Again, matching the type of the instance variable. And we will say this dot first name being the instance variable equals first name that we have passed in to our function. So this is at its essence, the accessor pattern. We provide a private variable in the class, and then we provide getter and setter methods for the value. This instance variable can be thought of as a property since it holds a state of the object and can be accessed or set by methods within the class using the accessor pattern. This type of a class in Java is also known as a plain old Java object or POJO. So this class as written doesn't really have much in the way of 
of intelligence, and it doesn't do a heck of a lot. JavaFX has introduced a new scheme for implementing properties, and it follows the accessor pattern. Classes that implement the properties must provide a getter and a setter that return and set the value of properties, unless, of course, the property is read-only. In that case, only a get method is required. But instead of using a simple field such as string to represent the value of the property, JavaFX has created special property classes to represent the property. And these classes will encapsulate the value of the property in an object. And that object provides a host of new features, including being observable and also giving you the ability to bind properties together. So let's change our current class to this new property type that's provided by JavaFX. Instead of using a string, we'll use a string property. Add the import for that. And then since it's an object, we have to actually create an instance of it. And we'll do that in the constructor. So first name equals new simple string property. A string property is an abstract class. Simple string property is a concrete implementation of that abstract class. So that's where we're using string property as the type for the first name. But when we actually instantiate it, we're using the concrete implementation. One of the constructors for the simple string property class requires three parameters. The first of those is the containing object or the object that contains the property, in this case, first name property that being person, and we specify that as this, the name of the property, which is first name, and an initial value if we want to provide one. So you'll see now we have some errors that also show up in our two methods. Since we now have a property that wraps the value for first name, the string value, we now have to use that property to get the value that's wrapped. So it's this dot first name dot, as you might expect, get. And the same first name. This dot first name dot set. And we'll pass the value first name that was sent through the parameter of the method call. We're also going to create a third method that returns the property itself. And again, this has a naming convention. So we're going to public string property because we're, that's the type that we're going to return and we're going to use the name of the property first name and we're going to add as a suffix the word property and we're going to return this dot first name so let's go back to our main class. Let's create an instance of our new person object. We'll give that person a name. First name, of course. And we'll call this person Bob. Let's do just a quick sys out to the console. Person dot get first name. We'll run that and we should see Bob in the system console. Bob. So the person's name has been set to Bob. Now let's get the first name using our getter method. We'll say string first name equals person dot get first name. We'll do another sys out. Run that. So we'll set to Bob and when we get it, it's also Bob. But in addition, now we have that third method that returns the property itself. And that allows us to observe the property for changes. And it also allows us to bind that property to other properties. So let's now, we'll say string property first name 
first name property equals person dot first name property. And now if we were to say first name, first name property dot, you see all of the methods that you now have available to you. We can add listeners to first name property so that when the value changes, we can be notified. We can also bind the value of this property to other properties. And we're going to get into that in another tutorial. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to add a listener to first name so that you can be notified whenever it changes. So we're going to add a change listener to the first name property. Choose the correct import, and then we'll add the unimplemented method. Clean things up just a little bit. And you'll see that what we're given when we get notification of the change is an observable, which is the bean class on which the event occurred. And we will also get the old value and the new value. So the old value is the value before we changed it. And the new value is the value that we changed it to. So let's just a quick example and we'll just sys out that to the console. First name changed from old value. To new value. So we've set the first name to Bob. Now we're going to change the first name to another name. So we would say person.set first name buddy. And now when we run that, we should get Bob, Bob, and then first name changed from Bob to buddy. Observability is one of the things that's built in to the new property types in JavaFX. And this can be pretty powerful, and we'll get into more concrete implementations of this in later videos as we start building things. Now, let's take a look at all of the property types that are available to us in JavaFX. As you can see, looking at the graphic that's currently on the screen, we have JavaFX property classes for 10 different uh, types. We have the Boolean, and for each of those, we have the simple property and a, essentially a read-only property. So Boolean, double, float, integer, list, long, map, object, set, and string classes. So we have the ability to add properties for all of these different types. In our next video, we're going to get into property bindings. So I'm hoping that you'll come back and join me for that one. In this video tutorial, we learned about JavaFX properties. If you enjoyed this tutorial, click the thumbs up button to like the video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel to view more JavaFX videos. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And until next time, Stay safe and keep on coding.